Good afternoon everyone, this is Brian Weber here. Welcome to another YouTube video. And in this video I'm gonna talk about how to use Thinkorswim. And I use Thinkorswim primarily to do my technical analysis and put my orders in either through the Top Step Trader account or with Sierra Chart using my AMP account. So in this video we're gonna talk about pretty much how to use everything on the platform from how to modify your settings, the appearance of your charts, how to add studies, how to use the flexible grid layout to get multiple uh, screens to pop out or uh, charts to pop out if you have multiple screens and much, much more. So let's just dive right in. And if you guys have any questions, don't please don't hesitate to drop a comment on this video. Um, and if you guys enjoyed this video, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Appreciate the support. All right, let's dive in. Okay guys, so after you have opened up a new account, a new brokerage account with TD Ameritrade and you have downloaded Thinkorswim and I provided the link to do that in the description below on this video. So what we have to do is just log in and make sure once you log in that you see up here in the top left, it says connected and real time data. That's very important since we're doing our technical analysis in Thinkorswim, we need to make sure that we have real time data. And if you don't have real time data, that means you need to sign the exchange agreements in your TD Ameritrade account. So you can do that by logging into tdameritrade.com and that will be under client services, then my profile, and then towards the bottom right, you'll see exchange agreements, make sure that you sign both of them. So the first thing I wanna dive into is just the general appearance of, a, of the chart, because the only things we're really going to be using it are the charts, the studies, the flexible grid, and that's pretty much it. If we look at the chart here, this is the home page. When you log in, I don't use this tab at all. I can close that by clicking that button. And then I'm already on the charts tab where I wanna be. I have ES up, which is the E-mini S&P 500 futures. So first, as you can see, this is the default layout. It is drawing some trend lines that I had from previous analysis that I did. So I tried to make this as bare bones as I could. And I actually can, can get rid of this stuff for now. Just clicking the lines and deleting them, just so you guys can see from a fresh start how I would update this chart to look nice and clean. So first things first is we want to go into settings here. Chart settings is the gearbox at the top. So first things I'll look at are, I want to make sure that I'm snapping drawings to open high, low, and close. So when we draw trend lines or fibs or something, it'll snap to the candles, so it'll be exact. So let's see what else we got here. We don't need data box, we don't need that. Make sure our time zone is correct. So let's go click apply, and then let's go to the price axis. I like to add an expansion area of about 5% up and down, just so we have a little bit more real estate to see the price action. Everything else here looks fine. Let's go to time access. I usually like to add about five or 10. You can do 10 expansion bars, that's up to you. You'll be able to customize it how you see fit. So it'll push the chart a little bit to the left so we aren't crunched up right to this right where the price is on the vertical column. I do wanna keep the show rollover lines which are just these green dash lines. You can see because the contract month and the year. So if I, I wanna keep those rollover lines, I'll keep this box checked. Do I wanna show expiration Friday? No, I don't really think I need to because I understand as a trader that every third Friday of the month is option expiry. So it's not that important to me. So we can clean the chart up just a little bit. And then I'll keep the show year marking lines the way they are. And this is where we can customize our favorite time frame. So I don't use the one minute. So we can go ahead and edit that and put this to a tick chart. Do 512. Of course, this is all based on preference for you. And I'll keep the five minute, but make it one day. And 15 minutes, fine. 30 minute, hourly, four hour, one day. All that stuff's okay for now. Next, we'll do appearance. I usually fill in the candles on the green because it's kind of hard to see. So now all the green candles are solid. Another thing I wanna get rid of is the grid because it's just a little too much for me. So it looks nice and clean right there. 
Another thing is that I'll change the volume color to have about 50% transparency. So whatever half of that is, hit OK. So that'll cut that a little bit. And let me see really quick. Let me go back to general. Yes, this is one thing I really want to show you guys. Click overlap volume. That'll take the volume off the lower indicator and put it on our chart so we can have more real estate on the chart. It looks nice and clean now. Go back to appearance really quick just to make sure that we have everything we need. I think that looks good to me. And we're not trading equities or or options at the moment. So let's go to futures, show open interest. We don't need to see that. And everything else looks good here. So hit OK. So if I want to keep this style for every single chart that I have, what I want to do is go here to styles and click save styles. And then I'll do PLT base style. I'm not including patterns and study set. It's just gonna be for the candles and the appearance and I'll click save. So if I were to, for example, reset to factory default, do that. So it's got the same crap that I don't want in there. I can simply go to styles and click load styles and go to PLT base style and I've got everything I want, except for some reason the open interest is not saving. So if I go to futures, um, it must be because this is an indicator. So let me remove that. Yep. So actually what I want to do is override that again, save style, and I'll include patterns and study set and override it. And just to prove that that worked, let's try the same thing I did again. Let's go back to the factor default. Let's load that style I just made. And there we go. So for every chart that we make with the flexible grid, we can apply this style to it and then add our indicators on there as well. So next up, I'm gonna go down to a five minute chart. Let's say we just wanna add some indicators to the chart. We just click this flask right here and that should open up a new dialog box. So let's say we wanna add like a exponential moving average. So type, start typing exponential and it should pop up. So we, there it is right there, click add selected. I'm gonna keep it as a nine EMA, but if I wanted to edit the time frame, click the gearbox and we can change the length here. And I don't need the up signal and I don't need the down signal because I'm not trading off of that. And click okay and apply. So we have a nine EMA on the five minute right there. Let's add a custom study that I have. It's a RSI study. Click add selected and we'll apply it. And that looks good to me. Uh, also, let me add one more thing. I wanna add my autofib study that I created. Click add and you'll see that it pops up there. And you can see that the autofibs pops up right there and we can click apply and we can see that the fibs have drawn. And there's one thing that I noticed. And if we go to the studies here or the settings up here in the gearbox, if I go to price axis, which is the vertical one, unclick fit studies, which is making the vertical length of the chart expand to fit every study because I have fit extensions on, on this study and I don't want to make the chart compress because of that. So when I unclick that button, it brings it back to normal. I can actually adjust this lower indicator by clicking right where the chart and the indicator meet and I can compress it down to my liking so I have more chart room here. Let me just add one more indicator that I really like in my charts, and that's going to be the auto trend line or auto triangle channel. Click apply, hit OK. So this is, let's just say this is all the indicators that I want in all my charts that I'm going to add. Say if I want to have uh, charts looking at the, the tick chart, the five minute, the 15 minute, 30 minute, four hour, whatever. It's up to us, right? Whatever we want to analyze the market. So we can actually click, so we don't have to add this individually every time. So let's go back to the, stud the studies button and we can click save as set. And we can do PLT example, save, and then I'll hit okay. So that study set is saved so I can apply it along with my appearance or my style to each chart that I add without having to add everything individually. To make this even faster, we can go in here to the styles and we can click 
save style again and then we can click the base style plus indicators and include pattern style patterns and study set so this is a one a one click thing that's going to save us a lot of time once we start creating different charts so before we move into how to use the flexible grid i want to cover some of the drawing tools that i find to be really helpful so if you have a mouse you can click the roll ball in the middle and it should bring up all these drawing tools you have a pan which you'll be able to move the chart left right up and down the pointer simply if you click and hold it'll zoom in on an area if you right click hit auto zoom that'll bring us back out so if if you don't have a middle roller on your mouse you can up here and then we can go to drawing tools right here and then find the the same stuff that i'm looking at as well but for simplicity and, and usability i'm just going to use my mouse so here's a trend line it's this diagonal line so if i click that since we're snapping to the high and low and open close of a candle if i click this guy let's say right here click near it it should snap to that low and bring it close to there it snaps to that other candle so you can see it drew a trend line and we broke a trend here so it's a nice thing to have if i want to draw another one here i can do that as well and it's snapping right to the highs and the lows of these candles so it's an exact drawing instead of estimating so you can feel really confident that this is set up pro uh, properly so another one that i use i don't really use horizontal lines because i have other studies that do that for me but if you want to you can draw use price level and you can also snap that to a level that you want just like that and then another thing that i use or you can use channels if you see a parallel channel which would be something like drawing from this low and then to the same high and then i have to draw the extension up to the next high that i want and that will draw my channel but i don't don't really need to use that because my auto channel will typically do it for me and then the next one the main drawing tool that i use is the fibonacci retracements i do have a study that automatically does it for me but let's just say i didn't have that and i could use that fib tool to draw from a measured move from high to low and i can get the the retracement levels so let me get rid of that let me remove so if you want to remove these drawings simply click it hit delete and okay now we're just back to our indicators with a clean chart next i want to show you how to use the flexible grid and this is how we can set up multiple different time frames to look at the market so we can do our analysis and figure out where is the best location to take a trade let's say we like this chart we want to take it from this main application and put it on a separate monitor monitor that we have so we'll go to the show action menu and we can click detach so now i can actually move this around so my screen is sharing the the laptop that i have but i can drag this off into my other monitor and say put that on a bigger monitor so i can i can see the five minute chart a lot better let's say i want to do let's detach another one but i want to do i want to look at all the indices on another monitor so i can look at the es the nq the rty maybe oil or gold or the ym or something like that let's do let's click this uh rectangle here and let's do four in a row it's going to be a little compressed at the moment. So another thing is that before I'm going to unlink this, but I'll explain exactly what that does. So let's say I want to do ES, I'll do NQ and you'll see that this brings up the old default setting that we don't want RTY and let's just do crude oil, for example. So I don't want to spend all this time actually changing this stuff individually like I did for the first one. So let me move this to 15 minute. You zoom in a bit. If I wanted to just apply what I have on my ES chart here to all three of these, say I want the 15 minute and all those studies, I can go in here and save the style again. So it should be under styles here. So I can go to save style and I can do 15 minute include patterns and study set save so then i could come here to this one 
on NQ, and then I can load that study set. Bam, zoom in a bit so we can see the chart. And do the same thing here for RTY. And then one more time for CL. So now I can see all of these markets uh, in the 15 minute with my indicators. So I can have a longer time frame look into what the market's doing. And then I can drag this one to my other monitor that I have and keep that so I can have, have that on my right side of my monitor or however you like, wherever you'd like to place that. And what I normally have in front of me on my, on my laptop screen, what you're looking at right now, which is currently the five minute, I typically have it split two ways. I'll have the five minute, like you see right there on the left hand side. And then what I'll do is this is still, you can do ES to the current contract. What I'll do is, is I'll link the right one to the left with the red. So automatically, whatever I type into these and the other five minute chart that I moved to the left screen will automatically update to the ticker symbol that I want. So first thing I want to do is simply just come in here and apply the style. And that's the base style plus the indicators. And I want to change this to the 512 tick. And I'm going to zoom in. There's a few things that I don't keep on here, which are the 9 EMA and the auto fibs, because I want to look at it from a longer time frame. And I actually don't need the volume here. So what I do is, is I go to settings and I go to appearance. I'll click on the preset color and I'll pretty much turn off the volume color, make it fully transparent because for tick chart, I don't care about the volume, but I'll keep it on the five minute. So I actually have a lot more indicators that I put on here, but mainly for momentum price levels. It'll just be a bunch of horizontal dash lines that I can get the pivots from, uh, pivot points, and then expected range, volume, VWAP, stuff like that. But I'm just keeping this simplistic. And if you are in our futures trading course, you'll be able to see exactly the studies that I use so you understand what you're looking at when we're in the live trading room. Also note that you can actually save these grids as you want. If you go click on this rectangle that's split in two, you can save the grid. So you'll be able to do this on every chart that you popped out, you detached and you modified. You can save the grid as an example for future reference, however you want to. And before I wrap it up and show you actually how to save this entire configuration. So if something were to happen where your toss reset your settings by accident, we can save the entire configuration so we can load it from memory. One more last thing I want to cover is the flexible grid. If we click flexible grid underneath the chart tab, you can see this is kind of where you can start. If you didn't already know that you could do it on the charts tab by clicking this rectangle up here and just adjusting the chart how you want and then detaching it under this guy, under this drop down. But if we use the flexible grid, we actually can just use these buttons right here. Click this to add one to the right, click it again, add another one, and that'll remove it. Remove, remove, and then we can add another one below it. So it's completely customizable. And then when you're done, you can click detach, which will open up another window and we can move this to another screen. And it's as simple as that. So it's really amazing and TOS is very easy to customize. And we wanna make sure that we're, when we're trading futures, we're only trading one instrument. We actually wanna make sure that we're, for the instrument we're trading with all our other charts, we want to link, link that ticker symbol, say for how I have it on the five minute and the 512 tick. And usually on the right side of the screen, which I already created, are the indices. And I don't link those because I always keep those the same. And the first five minute chart that I made is typically the 30 minute, the four hour, and the, the daily next to each other. So that could be a little exercise for you to figure out how to do that. And if, you're, if you need help, just leave me a comment on this video and I'll be more than happy to help.
I want to show you guys actually how to save your configuration. So if we go up to setup here, and then we save the workspace as, it could be like whatever you want it to be, PLT example workspace. So save. So that's saved. Just make sure right there. And then let's go ahead and reset workspace to default. And this is going to wipe out everything we just did. And it brings us back to the basics. Everything that comes with TOS as a default. And say, oh crap, how do I get back what I just had? You know? And good thing you saved it, saved your workspace. So we can go to setup and then we can simply just go down to the name we the name of the workspace we created. PLT example workspace, click it, and we want to click OK, and then it will toss will restart and bring back everything we just created. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. It's a very quick and straight to the point tutorial and really all you need to know for thinkorswim when you're trading futures. We don't need to know anything about the options. Um, the trade, the analyze tab, the scan, anything like that, because we're trading the same instrument every time. If you guys have any questions or want me to dive into any of these features in more detail, just let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to do that. And thanks again for tuning in, guys. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, just go ahead and click our logo that's popping up now to receive a notification every time we upload a video. And we will be back with uh, another educational video for you guys. Very soon. All right. Have a good one.